Hey everybody, this is Breadman from the Natural Selection 2 forums. I'm going to give you a brief overview of using the new Spark Editor to create levels for Natural Selection 2. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in. I'm in this perspective view here. I'm going to grab the Rectangle tool. As you can see, a live grid comes up. I'm going to click and drag. Drag out a rectangle. And it creates a polygon. Uh, once I have that, I'm going to hold down the right mouse button to move my camera around. Just uh, once you have the right mouse button clicked, you can also use your WASD keys to move around. Uh, also, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out and the, uh, hold down the middle click to pan. Uh, I'm going to then grab my extrude tool. With the extrude tool, you grab a face. If you move it up, you'll notice it creates a 3D box similar to a brush uh, for in Hammer. Fortunately, we don't need to use brushes anymore because if you drag down, actually creates a hollow box with the polygons facing in and if you move the camera inside you can see that all four walls floor and ceiling are already created for you uh, one of the first things I do when starting a level which I recommend you do as well I'm gonna go to my prop browser filter for player just click directly on the face you want to create it create a player prop. This is just good practice so that you have a feel for the scale of your level uh, from as soon as, as soon as you start. Uh, so we've got one room with a player in it. I'm going to go work on extending that. So I'm going to go and look at this wall over here. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again. Uh, notice that the edge I'm hovering over is blue and there is a red dot designating where my cursor is going to affect the wall. So I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to drag out a rectangle again and what happens here is the rectangle is actually s embedded into the existing face. So you can see there's two faces here now. Uh, you can also turn on triangulation if you want to get a better feel for how your faces are being split up there. Now that I have that extra face, I'm going to grab my extrude tool again. Just click and drag and I've created a hallway. You can see from the outside I'm going to extend my hallway down a little further. The face is still selected, so I'm going to grab my Move tool. There's a little selection gizmo which comes up. I'm going to continue to drag it out in the x-axis. Oh, notice that the walls are stretching. That's because this little button down here is the button you use to lock your textures. I'm going to turn it off so that I keep the same texture dimensions. I'm going to drag my hallway out a little bit, then I'm going to come down in here. I'm going to grab another, cool, the, another tool, the Line tool works similar in the, as the, to the rectangle tool. I'm going to move it along an edge here, get a red, lot, red dot, click and drag up until I snap to the other line at the top. And once again, I've split this up into multiple faces. I'm going to grab the extrude tool, create a corner, drag that out a little more. Uh, line tool is useful for a few other things uh, as well as just drawing right onto faces you can create new faces using the line tool so I'm going to come up here I'm going to grab this point drag out to the side keep dragging You'll see as soon as I complete a loop, a face is already created for me. Uh, you can use the rectangle tool in the same way. Notice the vertex turns green, it means that I'm hovering over it. Create a wall. That's a little buggy. Sometimes you don't quite get the wall that you want, but uh, Max is working on that. You can grab the line tool. Notice the little helper line shows up. close out this room. Uh, we still don't have a ceiling, so I'm going to grab edges by holding down the control key and clicking multiple, and I'm going to go edit, create face, and it's smart enough to know that it's a ceiling face, and so it's facing down. Okay, so now that I've got some basic level geometry in here, uh, I'm going to focus on making it look a little nicer. I'm going to uh, press Alt-W, which is the same as this Maximize Viewport toggle here. 
brings up my 2D views. Uh, you can use the middle mouse button to pan around in these. Same kind of controls. Wheel to scroll. Zoom. Scroll wheel zooms in and out. Um, if you don't exactly see your level, what you're working on, uh, just select some stuff and then hit the Z key, which is the same as this little uh, zoom to selected elements button. And then that'll just focus on whatever uh, you have selected, which is useful. I'm just going to uh, click and drag here and try and select just the walls on my level. And then I'm going to go to the paint tool which brings up all your texturing tools and it's going to filter through the texture browser here. Just, just going to pick some basic textures for now. I'm not going to focus too much on uh, aligning them or anything. I'll, you can do that in a uh, more advanced tutorial. Uh, plus the texture tools are one of the things that Max is working on right now so they're going to change a lot in the next couple of patches. Uh, just throw down a floor texture. I'm just holding control to select all these faces. So it looks like this face is uh, scaled down a lot. Uh, so I'm just going to throw some scale values in there to uh, bring that up, make it look, uh, look a little more better there. Okay, so now that we've got some basic textures in, I'll probably uh, throw down some props just to kind of add some detail. Uh, yeah, some wall panels. Just make things look a little more interesting. Uh, what happened here is I clicked on this wall, but the uh, default rotation of the model is the other way here. So I can just grab my rotate tool, and I can click and drag on an axis, and that'll rotate it around. Uh, the rotation snap is set to whatever is down here in the corner. Uh, if you want to override that, you can hold down Alt if you're uh, trying to get a little more specific rotation. There. So we got some props. Uh, throw a light in and see what this uh, is actually going to look like when you're in the game because this is the exact same engine All right. click on the create light button drop a light in and just kind of move it up into the center of our room here and I'm going to go and I'm click on the perspective text and where it says textured lit I'm going to select that and now we've entered lit mode uh, the light's a little dim, obviously, so I'm going to go to my Select tool. When I go to the Select tool, this blue circle comes up, and this is the fall-off radius of your light. So you can just click and hold on it, drag it out, and now the light is illuminating the whole room. Also, while you're in Select mode, uh, some more options come up in the Edit window. You can increase the intensity of the light, make it a little brighter. Uh, this max distance is just the same as your blue circle there. And the color. And, uh, grab a different color, the light changes color, and uh, yeah, suddenly we're looking a lot more like natural selection, right? So, um, let's drop a light in the hallway. I'll create an actual light source this time. So I'm going to go to Textured Unlit so I can see it. Go to my Prop Browser. Grab a light model here. Throw it on the ceiling. It's a little... I, might be a little big, so I'm going to grab my scale tool. I click on that. Uh, if I hold down shift while I'm scaling, it will scale in all dimensions equally. And then I'm going to go to my 2D view here, just make sure that's still, uh, you see it's not quite attached to the ceiling, so I'm just going to move it up so it's attached there. Drop another light in. And there you have it.